I have two basic principles in life. Krishna's God and Prabhupada's the boss. And for me, everything else is negotiable. And if I if I meet a um, a rabbi, if I meet a, a Christian minister, if I meet a a, a mullah, uh, I'm perfectly happy to talk to them about their idea of God, their idea of suffering, the 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 issues that we can all talk about fairly easily, their idea of compassion and tolerance and love. I don't have any difficulty talking about these things with anyone, because this is in the tenth canto of the Gita. Krishna talks about vada. Being of all the processes of discourse, he is Vada. And Vada means that you get people from different perspectives to come and talk about the truth, Sat, what is truth, what is real. And some people will be scientific. They're not interested in God. They're just interested in seeing reality in the material context. And some people are interested in the spiritual context. And some people are more religious, uh, sectarian. Everyone's got their perspective. But we need to be open to hearing. We need to have that, uh, that uh, open-heartedness. But as we go through life, we make our decisions. And mm -hmm. for me, as I say, just personally, after meeting all these people, which I've gone out of my way to do, um, my principles are Krishna is God and Prabhupada is the boss. That's and uh, that's, okay. that's where my focus is. And based on that, I can talk to anyone. And I'm not afraid. I'm not threatened. Because I've made my decision. My acharya is... Founder Acharya, as we call him, is Srila Prabhupada. And so everyone measures up to that. And if, if someone s says, um, like in one lecture I gave in Belfast in North Ireland, someone stood up at the back and said, your Krishna is not God, he's just, he's just a goat herd. He didn't even get the cow herd oh, thing. Oh, right. God, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, that's a, a certain perspective. Now, I could have said, yeah, and Jesus Christ is an unemployed carpenter. You know, oh, uh, but what, okay. it, it's kind of, you've, you've brought these persons down to a very material, mundane, economic level, mm -hmm. and that's, that's not their worth. So if that's, if that's the only value you see in God and Krishna, then, yeah, that person at the moment is not going to be my Sangha. I got it. Because to me, Krishna is God. Therefore, I want to talk to people who have that understanding. And then, and that's my club. And they're the people, I, I worship my deities. I want to talk to people about my, the experiences I have when I worship my deities. I can't talk about that to everybody. It's a personal thing. It's an experience. It's not about um, rational thought. It's not about intellectual pursuit. It's not about religion. It's a personal experience I have of God. And it's personal to me. And it's not personal even to other devotees. They'll come and see my day. I remember we were in Spain at a conference one time, and devotees from all over, my friends, and I had someone had given me a little giriraj. And for years, I'd, I'd always in my heart very silently wondered if maybe if you ever want to come to me, I'm here. you know. And, and giriraj came. I was so thrilled. And I brought my friends into the room and said, look, Giriraj. <laughs> And he was so special to me, and I was so overwhelmed by him. And uh, they all looked, and it was just another Giriraj to them. <laughs> and I realized this is my experience of God. And we all, we all have our individual experience of God. So I'm an insider in my relationship with my little Giriraj Govinda, as I call him. Uh, but I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one who has oh that God. relationship. And, so, and now so, I sorry, now I understand what you're saying about the individual uh, individual outsider in the insider outsider discussion being so problematic yeah. that ultimately if you want to say the insider you could reduce, reduce the insider to only an individual yes and each of us could become almost like an island where yes. but and then what you said earlier that we can't exist as island like that we are relational creatures yes so uh, now an another point uh, sorry uh, just to interrupt you yeah it's just just to the reason why that Krishna's God, why Prabhupada is the boss for me. When Prabhupada gave his uh, uh, nectar devotion lectures in 1973 in Vrindavan, this is a series of lectures he gave on this text, and it, it's become, become quite famous. But one thing that caught me, I was a very young devotee, and I was listening to these lectures, and he said, um, Suridam Sarvabhutanam, Krishna is your only friend. And he said, you may say that I am your friend, but he said, I may not be there at the time of death for you, but Krishna will be there. 
Krishna is your only friend. And I was so impressed because I'd heard of all kinds of gurus and swamis and yogis, but here was someone who was most definitely saying, don't worship me, worship Krishna. And there was such integrity in that. The, the integrity of his message was right there. He had disciples who he was conscious. He said, you may say that I am your friend. He was conscious of what they thought of him and how they elevated him, but he told them the truth. I was so impressed with that integrity. And that's why he's, he's the boss for me. And that's the integrity, the character that I'm looking for in people. And that's not that's not purely spiritual. That issue of character is an issue of dharma, of principle, that we, we decide to follow certain principles. And one of our principles, yeah. of course, is Krishna is God and Prabhupada is the boss. They're, they're my principles. And, and then we have ahimsa, we have seva. There are certain things that we add to our life. And by adding them to our life, our life becomes consciously constrained. So they, Prabhupada says, the sadhu, is someone who is strict with himself, but liberal with everybody else, which means our spiritual sadhana is very individual. It, we, we adopt our principles. They're our principles. They're not everybody else's, and we know that. We've adopted them through association with sadhus, through association with devotees, through association with Krishna, through, our, through practices, and then we adopt these principles and someone else doesn't adopt these principles. And I remember we have our four regulative principles in ISKCON. I'm not talking about those principles. I remember one devotee saying, I, I only practice three. And I said, oh, goodness. Well, uh, and I was guessing which one was the one he wasn't practicing. And he said, yes, I practice the three, no meat, fish, and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So we all have our own, we all have our principles. And they have to be individual to us because they define us. They define our integrity. 